So just another observation. Let's go back to the same toy problem. If we draw a free body diagram of this guy, we have some displacement u, some displacement u2, p1, p2. p1 is going to be equal to a times the stress at the end, right? And according to Hooke's law, that's E, E1, okay? And so that's A, E. And if we use our definition of engineering strain, right, it's U1 minus U2 over L, right? So that's equal to A, E over L, U1, A, E over L, U2. Right, so the same thing for P2 is A times stress 2, which is AE times strain 2, which is AE U2 minus U1 over L. And that's equal to AE over L U1 plus AE over L U2. Right? And so if we wrote this uh, and, and of course, then this is equal to P. Right. So if we, if we wrote this in, uh, well, let's just, as the free body diagram goes without applying any, it's just P1 and P2. So if we write this in matrix equation, we have AE over L minus AE over L, AE over L minus. Right. So we get the same thing, right? Just from taking sort of a, me a mechanistic view, right? We draw a free body diagram and write down the forces in, at the end in terms of the stresses and strains using Hooke's law. But, and so you might ask, well, why didn't you just do that to begin with? Why take us through all these long equations and all this interpolating functions and all this stuff? Why do that? Well, the reason is, is the, the, the reason they're the same is because we assumed a constant strain across the element. It made it really easy. We use this definition of engineering strain, right? But there's really no straightforward way. Say we wanted to, so in other words, the strain in this element is just going to be a constant. Right? It's always going to be a constant. But what if we wanted to actually see a distribution of strain, like a linear distribution of strain? Well, in that case, there's no straightforward way to do it mechanistically. Right? But the other way, the, the, the application of the finite element, is, is very, very procedural. Right? And it'll work uh, you know, no, no matter what sort of interpolation or distribution of you want to look at across the element. You just sort of apply that procedure and again just to kind of recap what the procedure is it's it's you start with your strong form equation you multiply by a test function you integrate over the body you use integration by parts to move some of the integration onto the test function right then you make your choice of interpolating functions plug in nj uj for u plug in ni for the test function, and you've got your finite element equation. And it doesn't matter what the physics are. If you have your strong form equation, you apply this procedure to it, you can use the finite element method for it. It's very, very step one, step two, step three. Right? And so, you know, finally, we've been playing with this uh, model equation so much that you might wonder why when up till now the whole class we've been talking about solid mechanics and portal mechanics, right? Well, at least in 1D we had this model equation.
So, I'm going to make a table here. I'm going to have U, A, C, F, Q. So if we're interested in doing heat transfer, U is the temperature, A is the thermal conductivity, so like Ka. C is the convection, F is the heat generation, and Q is the heat. If we're interested in doing flow, then we have U is the pressure. This would be A is the resistance or permeability, uh, you know, depending on if you're talking about flow in a pipe or flow through a porous media. This is zero, this is zero, and this is a point source. So like in an in an injected amount of fluid or something. So elasticity, U is the displacement. Uh, A is the stiffness, axial stiffness, so like AE. This is zero. This is a distributed load, so an axial distributed force, and this is a point load. And there's also, we could do torsion, but, you know, it is what it is. So the point is, you know, up in, we, we, we wrote all those field equations earlier in the class, and it turns out at least in one dimension, this model equation we've been working with, by just choosing the data, A, C, and F, differently, and choosing the interpolation of U, I'm sorry, and choosing the in interpretation of U as temperature, as pressure, as displacement. This one model equation that we've wrote down a general finite element formulation for will actually solve the physics of all those problems, right? And so that's actually what problem two in your homework assignment is, is to write a general finite element code to solve this equation. And so hopefully you guys won't hate me for making you go through the exercise because I'm giving you a tool, right? When you're faced with any of these problems in the future, uh, all you, ha you already have a general tool. You'll have a code that can solve the physics while being one dimension, but it'll solve the physics of all these problems. So that's where I'll stop here today.